All the victims, all of them, you know, and you're talking about a lot of them, a lot. A lot of lives just gone right down the tubes because of me, you know, in one way or another. And it's not a good feeling. It's not a pleasant feeling. I'm not proud of anything I've done. And the worst thing is I don't understand why. I don't understand why. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. See, I got another channel. And it's called Worst Case Scenario. And it's the victims you got to remember. Sometimes the serial killers, I mean, they get to glory and the victims just get lost in the shuffle. But I am going to break out one now that this guy right here, back in the early 80s, a man named Bobby Joe Long. He was a serial killer and a serial rapist. He killed 10 women. Probably more than that. He murdered between May and November of 1984. He was arrested November 16th, 1984, thank God. But he was born October 14, 1953. He had a wife named Cynthia Bartlett. She was married to him for six years from 74 to 80. He had two children. Before moving to Tampa area where he done the murders, Bobby Joe Long had committed at least 50 rapes. Cynthia took the kids and left him in 1980. Yes, anyway. In 1981, uh, when he raped 50 women, now think about this. Now this is in California though. In 1981, Bobby Joe Long was charged, tried, convicted of rape, but appealed and conviction was acquitted so he got out of that he killed 10 women I'm gonna name them off and I'm gonna just remember their names real good even if I can't pronounce them that good because these are the ones that needs to get remembered Nagu Nagu the Nagu the Long she's a Michelle Sims 22. Elizabeth Louderback, 22. Chanel Devon Williams, 18. Karen Beth Densford, 28. Kimberly Kyle Hops, 22. Virginia Lee Johnson, 18. Kim Marie Swan, 21. Vicki Elliott, I don't know her age exactly, and also an unidentified Talk woman. with a serial killer. An exclusive interview with Bobby Joe Long, a confessed killer of 10 who grew up among us in South Florida. I can't think of a, a worse situation for a young girl to be in than to be in my car out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night. Tomorrow night, part two of To Kill a Stranger. His name is Bobby Joe Long. He's 31 years old. The divorced father of two. The confessed killer of ten. And nothing, nothing like you'd expect. A lot of people in the press and the papers have, have tried to portray me like I was some kind of a creature, right? Before I was arrested. Like, like I don't know, I, I hold up in my house somewhere under my bed and came out and ate mice and rats and stuff you know but it wasn't like that i was just like everybody else out there probably 99.9 percent .9 of the time i was normal as he is or he is or anybody else is but there's that one percent of the time or whatever that uh there's there's some kind of a problem there Bobby Joe Long's problem, he says, began here in South Florida with a motorcycle accident in the early 1970s. An accident that left him with severe head injuries and uncontrollable compulsions. In the beginning, the compulsion was to rape. Geez, you know, like the first time I did it, I couldn't really believe I did it. You know, it was when I was driving home afterwards, I was, uh... I was saying to myself, this is, this is insane. This is, this but the insanity continued there. until Bobby Joe Long had raped, he believes, more than 70 women here in South Florida. 
And the more he raped, he says, you know, I mean, the more that compulsion up. grew. As soon as I opened my eyes from being asleep, that's what I was thinking about. That didn't let up until I did it. Then when I did it, I felt great. I felt okay for a while. You know what I mean? I felt back to normal. But normal never lasted very long. And over a period of years, Bobby Joe Long's short fuse became even shorter. We were getting to the point where if someone looked at me wrong at a red light, and this happened several times, I had a gun up, cocked, aimed at their head, and my finger was tightening on the trigger. And if they hadn't have got out, like, you know, right now, I would have shot them. And I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I don't think you saw Where Bobby Joe Long's rapes turned to murder. So over a course of an eight-month period, you came up with ten bodies. Yes, ma'am. All young women, all brutally raped and murdered, all taken on what Captain Terry calls a death ride. There's no way. Killed other women. You know, I could have been one. I was that close. We'll hear more from 19-year-old Lisa McVeigh, the one victim who got away and put an end to Bobby Joe Long's killing compulsion. Probably the worst one that I could have let go was Lisa McVeigh. But the police uh, started to find this red fabric, you know, that was on the deceased women. They couldn't quite place it, but they was finding it on them, every one of them. At this point, they had mitigating factors to how the murders were simulated. I mean, they had eight different things he, he was doing. The first one, the victims had to depend on others for transportation. All the victims, or most, were found nude. The victims were all bound. <clears throat> they were all picked up in Tampa. They all left near interstates in, they was all left near interstates in rural areas. There were all, <coughs> they were all found a great distance away from where they was last seen before, or picked up or whatever. And, of course, we got that red carpet and that red fiber found on almost every victim. Lisa McVeigh was a 17 year old young lady on her way home from work on November 3rd, 1984. She was uh, leaving, uh, she's riding her bicycle home from work and all of a sudden somebody just jerked her off her bicycle and tied her up by someone she couldn't see. And then she was told to hide in the bushes because there's people coming. And then the perpetrator pulled a gun out and a knife and told Lisa to uh, blindfold herself. Seeing all the confusion, she went and blindfolded Jed evidently and he had to put the blindfold on. But she hadn't looked back at him. He pushed her quickly into the car and they sped off. And that's only going to get worse, guys, so I'm warning you ahead of time. Lisa begged for her life. She said, I'll do anything, just please don't kill me. He ordered Lisa to remove all her clothes and give him oral sex while he drove. Six on this. Now, when he got her back to the apartment, it was just beginning for poor Lisa McVeigh. The entire ordeal lasts 26 hours. She was repeatedly raped and <clears throat> fondled, it, just handled it, even made her shower with him and just, you know, making, doing lewd acts with him and making him do sexual things with him this entire time. And despite what this 17 year old Lisa was going through, let me tell you what this girl had. Something that very few people would ever have. Guts and a state of mind. Even though know she's getting put through that much hell to re remember stuff. 17 years old now. She kept her smarts and calm about her. Lisa looked around for anything. 
the blindfolded. She's blindfolded under right before they was getting home before all this big stuff happened. And of course, uh, doing that stuff in the car, she seen the dashboard and memorized it. And what she could, and what she could. Now, think about that a second. Think about that. You're 17 years old. You're a girl. You're tied up. You already had to be doing nasty things to a man. You know you're probably going to die. But yet, keep your cool and look just in case. There's hope I might get away and I can point this man out. Unreal. Bravery. And uh, she still <coughs> remembered the uh, dashboard of the car, the stucco building that they pulled up to, even the red steps they walked up on. Well, after that 26 hours of sexual torture, <laughs> He began to trust Lacey. He wasn't hostile to her. He stopped calling her a bitch. It was calling her a babe. Mm, we're no problem. And started. And uh, he told Lacey that he wanted to keep her. And with no idea what was going to happen to her, no idea what he was going to do with Lacey. <laughs> Done everything she could not to make him mad. She know that, but she's also keeping her eyes open in the house, and looking at everything. Be nice with him. He was telling, him, "Yeah, I may be your boy, you know, girlfriend and all that." Well, he began to lose interest. So he got Lisa, brought her back to the car, and Lisa knew now she's either gonna live or die in this moment because he probably took her back out to the car. And to her surprise, he stopped the car, told her to get out. He let her go and telling her, take care. I think he was wanting to see her again. He thought he was. Well, of course, no time wasted. Lena, uh, Lisa McVeigh, she got to the law and described the the guy to, I mean, to a T. <clears throat> she, she said, this is what she told me, she says, a white male in mid-30s. He had a deep voice. His hair was brown, about an inch in layer cuts. He had thin eyebrows, a short mustache, big nose, small ears, good teeth. He came across somewhat feminine. She also noted uh, noted the gun and, des and described his car, which happened to be a red or maroon two-door Dodge Magnum with red steering wheel, dash, and red carpeting in the full board. I'm glad she got away from it, mother. So, Hobby Joe Long killed 10 women. One was still unidentified. He was arrested on November 16, 1984. He got two death penalties, plus 693 years on 34 sentences in all. Governor Ron DeSantis signed a... <coughs> signed a Bobby Joe, Long, Bobby Joe Long's death warrant. And on May 23rd, 2019, Bobby Joe Long was put to death by lethal injection. He had no final words. Messed up thing. But guys, be careful out there. God bless. Take care.